someday for the past 10 years, someone, sometimes me, oftentimes someone else, like Nancy Harris, who does it better than anyone I know, mm -hmm. has stood right here and opened this book to read a passage from its pages. Now, I know the Baptists here among us <laughs> call themselves people of the book. <laughs> but as a one-time Baptist, notice I didn't say recovering Baptist, <laughs> <laughs> who has spent the past 33 years in the United Methodist Church, I, I can say that the book is loved in this family of God's church as well. The passage read for the past 10 years has almost always been pre-selected by following the common lectionary. Those are scriptures assigned to every Sunday of the Christian year. This morning, however, I chose to go outside the lectionary to a passage and words of Jesus, which to me reveal more clearly than anything else why it is we are all here today and have been here for 10 years. In the past 10 years, the version or translation of the Bible often shared from this spot has been Eugene Peterson's The Message, primarily because it's my favorite modern version. Today, though, I wanted to bring you the scripture from a translation made by a New Testament scholar who held a Ph.D. in Greek from the very same seminary that I graduated from, the Southern Baptist Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky, and a man who spent most of his ministry operating an interracial communal farm in South Georgia in the 1950s. <laughs> Can you imagine what the neighbors and the church people thought of that at the time? Clarence Jordan wrote the Cotton Patch Gospel, translating Matthew and Luke and part of John in a way that puts Jesus and his followers in the 20th century American South, our part of the world. Miller Ford, who Kylie Herbert better be able to tell me who that is, right, Kylie? The founder of Habitat for Humanity International, was a great admirer of Clarence Jordan, and he knew him well. And Miller Fuller wrote in the introduction to the Cotton Patch Gospel these words. He said, Clarence saw the principal problem of modern Christians to be that we want God to conform to our agenda and to bless our endeavors and goals. Clarence said that's backwards. God has an agenda and wants God's people to learn what it is and to become active participants in that agenda. Hence the expression, the God movement. Concerning church organizations, Clarence Jordan said, they often built God boxes. Then they would invite a certain kind of God into their boxes. That God, for instance, might be a God for white people, or for affluent people, or for highly educated people. Guess what, Clancher said? The God of all creation, the God of the universe, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, doesn't show up in human made boxes. That God is the authentic Lord of all, and that God is often shut out those human boxes. My prayer, my prayer has been for the past 
last 10 years, that South Main would always be a place where the God, who is the authentic Lord of all, would be invited in and would be honored. And all of God's children would always be welcomed here, just as we are. But affirming that God is not finished with any of us yet. Would you hear now the word of God from the gospel according to Matthew in the Cotton Patch Version? And I'll actually be starting at the end of the fourth chapter. And he, Jesus, traveled throughout Georgia, <laughs> teaching in their churches and spreading the good news of the new order and healing every sickness and disease that people had. News of him spread through the whole South. Folks brought to him all who were ill with various diseases and afflictions. The demonized, the lunatics, and the paralyzed. And he made them well. Large crowds from all over Georgia, Florida, Alabama, and Tennessee followed him. When Jesus saw the large crowd, he went up the hill and he sat down and his students gathered around him and he began teaching. And this is what he said. The spiritually humble are God's people. For they are citizens of the new order. They who are deeply concerned are God's people. For they will see their ideas become reality. They who are gentle are his people. For they will be his partners across the world. They who have an unsatisfied appetite for the right are God's people. For they will be given plenty to chew on. The generous are God's people. For they will be treated generously. Those whose motives are pure are God's people. For they will have spiritual insight. Men of peace and goodwill are God's people, for they will be known throughout the land as his children. Those who have endured much for what's right are God's people, for they are citizens of his new order. You are all God's people when others call you names and harass you and tell all kinds of false tales on you just because you follow me. Be cheerful and good-humored, because your spiritual advantage is great, for that's the way they treated men of conscience in the past. You all are the earth's salt. But now if you just sit there and you don't salt, how will the world ever get salted? You'll be so worthless that you'll be thrown out and trampled on by the rest of society. You all are the world's light. You are the world's light. You are a city on a hill that cannot be hid. Have you ever heard of anybody turning on a light and then covering it up? Don't you fix it so that it'll light up the whole room? Well then, since you are God's light, which he has turned on, go ahead and shine. Shine so clearly that when your conduct is observed, it will plainly be the work of your spiritual thought. That's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Highlighted in these words is a message of mercy and hope. That's the message God has spoken in and through this place for 10 years now. This morning, that message comes alive to us through the medium, medium of music. 
So, sit back. Don't relax too much because you might fall asleep. <laughs> sit back. Soak it in. So that when we leave here today, we're all better salt and light. The first song to be shared today is one I heard just a few weeks ago. And the words were so moving to me. Uh, and as I listened to the vocalist sing it, this was at the South Carolina United Methodist Union <laughs> Conference, I thought, I can hear Debbie Bannister singing this. <laughs> and so she comes to share mercy. <laughs> I am so thankful.